Think about that embarrassing photo of yourself. You know the one. Maybe your bangs were cut way too short or your fly was down. Maybe it's a baby picture of you naked in the bath that your mother insists every guest just has to see. We're often embarrassed of our old selves. We question our old appearances and tastes. But in this week's episode, we continue with a woman whose appearances and tastes might not have changed. But her heart and lifestyle did. Let's get going. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. We do this by using true life stories of real people. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I've got a question for you. How do you see growth in your life? Of course, you can look at your embarrassing photos and see how far you've come. (laughs) But on a spiritual level, how do you know that you've grown? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So this old man is crucified with Jesus and buried in the grave, and our new man rises with him. Jesus changed us, so therefore, we slowly take steps to look more like him. And yet, there are many people in our lives that don't like the changes we've made. They were friends with the old guy, and they're not fans of this new one. So, how do we tear away from our old lives? How do we leave people behind that have been there the whole time but are now, well, holding us back from spiritual growth? Put on your seatbelt. That's what we're going to talk about on this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. I'm sure you've had someone in your life try to hold you back. Now, sometimes they do it out of love, like when someone tells you you're probably not a good enough singer to headline at the local karaoke. They're just trying to protect you from pain and, a, well, a whole lot of embarrassment. Yet, sometimes, like we'll see in this week's continuation of Katie DePew's story, people try to hold us back from growth. Again, we become new people when we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but that doesn't mean we stop struggling with sin or that we're in a good environment to get out of our old lifestyles. As much as we want to help those in our lives and share Jesus with them, sometimes they just won't buy it. So how do we make such a hard decision to let go of someone you care about because they tried dragging you back down to your old self and your old sins? Well, that's the decision that Katie will have to make in this week's episode. Also, you want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter our sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize. And I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. Part two and the conclusion of the true story of Katie DePew. I can't believe this. Don't you have your own set of keys? Of course I do. It's just he has them. Maybe we can come back later. No, this is my house too. Whoa, 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 put that brick down. One way or another, I'm getting in. But Katie, what if... The woman in our story tried to get free of the world's vices. Here's the conclusion of Katie DePew's astounding true story of her journey home, right now on Unshackled. Oddly, I didn't see how desperate and extreme my actions, or really my entire life, had become. Normalcy had a way of slipping away from me without even knowing it. Holding on and trying to survive left me doing things I never would have thought I was capable of. It's a rough way of living, but I didn't know any different. Come on, light. Here, you want some of this? (coughs) You know, 
Everyone in the family says Chris is bad news and to steer clear of him. You don't understand. Chris and I have been through a lot together. Yeah, a lot of drugs. What was that? Nothing. It's just that, you know, he's abusive to you. Oh, they're just little scraps. Katie, it's never okay for a man to put his hands on a woman. Yeah, but he didn't mean to. You know, he's not going to change. I don't know if it's from his sister dying or what, but he's been like this as long as I've known him. I can't help but hope someday. My grandma asked me to give this to you. A Bible? Yeah. If you're up for it, you can come to church with us tomorrow. You know, I think I'd like that. I hope you enjoyed our services. I did. Do you have time to talk? Certainly. I... My life is a mess, really. Um, I'm into a lot of drugs, and I just... You don't need to tell me. It's not confession. You need to take all these things and tell them to God. You mean pray? In 1 John, the Bible says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But my life isn't... Jesus died for all sinners, and those who call on his name will be forgiven and have a home in heaven. While I had heard all these words before, somehow when Pastor was saying them to me, it was as though they were referring to me. It was so personal. I prayed right there for Jesus to forgive me and save my soul. I left the church having no idea what change had begun in my life. Chris! Chris, you're not going to believe what happened. Keep your voice down, Katie. I got a splitting headache. I went to church and asked Jesus to save me. Uh, okay. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, uh, congratulations. I was thinking, we've got to change the way we're living. <sighs> what do you mean? This camper is what I mean. For months, we've been sleeping on the floor in this fifth wheel, and we've got to get out. Oh, we don't have the money. I'll get a job. The nearest town with jobs is a 30-minute drive away. Then let's move there. Are you nuts? Only thing I'm doing is going back to sleep. So Chris wasn't all that supportive, but I was on a mission. I asked around until I hitched a ride to town and walked to the homeless shelter. There, a woman said I was welcome to stay free for a month while I saved up money for a deposit on an apartment. I began to notice my heart, my desires were changing. That breeze sure is brisk. <sighs> Feels more like February than November. You sure you want to be out here? Yeah, I like my room inside, but I need the fresh air. Well, I'll bear the elements as long as you do. Thank you. It's good to have company. Yeah, it's also good to have these. What's that? <laughs> There's some drugs a psychologist prescribed. You want to try one? No. No thanks. You better keep them. How about this? I gave up smoking. Hmm. Gave it up, huh? Yep. Cold turkey since the nicotine gum upset my stomach. So, you're clean? Finally. God's word says not to do those things, so I'm not anymore. Huh. <laughs> you got a lot of willpower. No. But I do have Jesus. And when I feel down, I dig out my Bible. I could sense my focus shifting away from me and more on the Lord. It was starting to feel like an actual relationship with the one true God, a healthy relationship. This freed me up to also focus on other things in a healthy way. Come in. Hi, I'm looking to volunteer. <laughs> Well, now the Humane Society is just a place, if you're not allergic, of course. <laughs> I'm new to the city and figured I could be volunteering while I job hunt. Excellent idea. I like to stay busy. Well, we will sign you up for the animal shelter. Okay, great. And may I ask what profession you're looking to find a position in? At this point, I'm willing to do anything. Mm, I know of a restaurant down the street that's hiring waitresses. Can I get the name? Oh, I can do better than that. I know the owner. I'll give him a call. No, Chris. No, stop! Katie! Katie! Don't! Get off me! Wake up! What? What happened? Where am I? You're safe. 
It's me, Heather. Heather. We're bunkmates at the mission, remember? Oh, yeah. You're okay. Sorry, I did it again. I keep waking you up and... It's all right. I'm worried about you, though. I have night terrors. Sometimes the nightmares feel so real, and other times I wake up exhausted, but I can't remember them. The past has a way of catching up with us. I don't know why I'm having them now. My life's finally improving. That is odd. I shouldn't have gotten any sleep the last decade. I should be sleeping like a baby now. Sometimes it just takes a while for the good to work its way through you. I guess. I could feel God working in my life in a way I never experienced before. It was more than just my life starting to look up. It was as if all of the events of my life were orchestrated. I found grace wherever I went. You know, undeserved favor. Good began to be the theme of my days, and the bad dreams were just that. Dreams. Chris! Chris, I'm home! Tell me you brought supper home with you. Gee, my day went well. Thanks for asking. Uh, sorry. Uh, all those hours standing washing dishes wiped me out. I I'm beat. I know, but... Doesn't it feel good to have money? I guess. Look around. We have our own apartment, a bed, dishes, and even a toaster. Who knew one could be so excited about small appliances? <laughs> I am. Every time I see it sitting on the counter, it reminds me we have a home and a normal life. Mm-hmm. Barely tolerable. What do you mean? We come home, we go to work, we come home, and do it all over again. Yeah, but it's an honest living. It's mediocre and redundant. Are you not happy you're drug-free and holding down a job? And we have all of this? A legitimate life without the craziness. I didn't say this that... This is more than we've ever had. It's been a long day. Just forget I said anything. I should have known things were too good to last. I had found Jesus and was devouring the scriptures. And for the first time, I felt a guiding light shining in my life. I knew right from wrong. I chose right over wrong. I knew what path to take. And God granted me strength moment by moment, which gave me a confidence and assurance I had searched everywhere to find. But as much as I wanted to share my passion and pursuit, it was up to Chris to decide if he wanted to join me. Hello? Hi, is this Katie? It is. Katie, I'm Richard, Chris's boss down at the diner. Is everything okay? I was calling you to find out. What do you mean? Is something wrong with Chris? He's missing his shift. Maybe. He said since he had the weekend off, he was going camping with some old friends. But he... he was going to go straight to the diner this morning. That's interesting. He didn't have the weekend off and missed his shifts. What? Really? I figured he'd forgotten, so I thought I'd give him till this morning to show up. I'm sure... I'm sure he's on his way there now. I don't share your confidence. I'll talk to him. Just give him another chance. And the way I see it, this is his third missed shift. So he's had plenty of chances. No, <laughs> then you're not firing him, are you? You can tell him when you see him. Such panic and fear railroaded my heart, it left me leaning over a chair gasping as I tried to remember how to breathe. It may sound like an overreaction, but all I could think was, is this the first thread that unravels everything? All right, folks, we'll get back to Katie's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. 
shackled.org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to part two and the conclusion of our true story of Katie DePew. You're supposed to be at work. <laughs> Babe, you don't have anything to worry about. What do you mean? I spoke with Richard about taking time off. You're lying. How dare you accuse me of lying? Richard called looking for you. What'd you tell him? That I thought you'd show up. You, you, you should have told him I was sick, Katie. Why wouldn't you cover for me? Why should I have to cover for you? I'd do the same for you. You're pale and clammy. Stop. Let me look. Get away from me. Yep. Pupils dilated. You're all twitchy. You've been doing meth. Oh, please. You have. D don't jump to conclusions. I was I was up all night partying. I, I smoked some pot, but that's it. I don't believe you. D well, Katie, do you believe Jesus would want you making all these accusations? I'm going for a walk. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, I actually don't go to church here. Okay. And I don't mean to sound crazy, but I'm so worked up right now, and could I play your piano? Uh, <laughs> oh, since it's Monday, the staff have the day off, so it's just me here. That's okay. Well, you'd be more than welcome to play the piano, but I, uh, I have a strict policy about not being alone with a member of the opposite sex. Oh. But tomorrow, my wife, Julie, and all the office ladies will be in. Can you come back then? What time? Well, any time after 8. Okay. I'll come then. Uh, wh what's your name, miss? Katie. Well, Katie, we're looking forward to meeting you and getting to know you. It'll be such a pleasure to have you visit. The highlight of our day. Um, thanks. I pondered the pastor's policy on my walk back to the apartment. Back to my broken life with Chris. It was just about the strangest thing I had heard in all my life. And yet, maybe it was his kindness, but in a weird way... I trusted him, and in time, I learned to trust his wife. Ah, oh, uh -huh. here it is, 828, Romans. Well, here, you read it. All right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I love that verse. It really gives us something to hold on to. Julie... Do you really think that God will do that for me? Katie, I've known you for a while now. <laughs> Ever since you came in off the street wanting to play our piano. Yeah, that was a crazy moment. I've watched your love for God grow over all this time. And I'm so proud of you. Aw, thanks. I have no doubt that God intends that verse for you. He's already been working good in your life and will continue to. I want him to, Julie. Just keep on going. And we'll have front row seats to watch it all unfold. The day I broke into my own apartment, I wondered if I'd find Chris passed out or dead inside, or if he was just out with his friends. But Chris was nowhere, and all my calling around to his buddies didn't amount to anything. Several days went by, and I cried my eyes out, having no idea what had happened. Paper or plastic? Hi, Mandy. Oh, hey, Katie. Paper, please. Hey, sorry about my loser of a cousin. Tried to warn you. What do you mean? Are you serious? You don't... No one's talked to you yet? No. Chris has been gone for days, and no one seems to know anything. Katie, Chris is in jail. No. Yeah. Cops busted him buying pills. I can't believe it. Also, he was manufacturing meth. Oh. Oh, my. Well, don't feel too sorry for him. He narked on some people. Who? You, for one, claimed you were in on it, too. That's a lie. I've been clean. I've become a Christian, and I have a job, and I have my life together. I even have a toaster. Just because you turned your back on your old life doesn't mean it can't find you again. Oh, no. I guess there's not much I can do about it. Well, if you want to visit him, he's in county. Thanks. At least I won't be picturing him dead in a ditch, and maybe I'll get some rest. At least you're filling out a little. 
I guess. Eating out of boredom. Sure not because of the taste of what they serve in here. I'll put some money in your account, so you can get something in the commissary. Good. Something to look forward to. There's more to look forward to than that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like a new beginning. Great. I'll just add that to my list of requests for the warden. Right behind comfy cots and better chow. Chris, you can have a fresh start with Jesus. I'll have a fresh start when I get out of here. And go back to your life of drugs and destruction? I, I, I'm going to clean up. Suppose you do. You'll still be missing the most important relationship we can ever have in this world. I know this works for you, but I don't need it. You don't need forgiveness for all that you've done? Of which, I know, there's been a lot. Even more than that, don't you want to be reconciled with God, who created you? Created you for relationship, and wants to spend eternity with you? Wants to save you from an eternity of pain by giving you an eternity of pleasure. <sighs> what am I going to offer for that? Wh what do I have? Yourself. Pastor and Julie reached out and paid for Chris to enroll in a Christian rehabilitation facility out of state. We began a long journey of prayer for his salvation. When we got word that Chris had received Jesus as his Lord and Savior, we were overjoyed. Wow, Chris, look at you. Yeah, clean up pretty well, khakis and a button down. It's been so long. A year, Katie. I'm so glad you're here for this service. Church is important to me now. Since I surrendered my life to Christ, a lot of things have changed. I'm so happy. Well, you were a real encouragement. And I saw how your life got straightened out by turning your eyes to the Lord. This is an answer to countless prayers, Chris. Despite Chris's change, I kept my distance to see if he would prove himself. When he started shedding pounds and wearing rebellious t-shirts and skipped more services than he attended, I confronted him. I begged him to choose Jesus over his own desires. Eventually, it became clear he had made up his mind and no amount of scripture I cited would change it. I finally told him, I can't walk down this road with you. Anytime we have to say goodbye, there is a sense of loss. Anytime we experience loss, there is grief. I clung to Matthew 19.29 that says, And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Ooh, that's hot. So, I was thinking... By which you mean planning. Oh, the same, dear. Anywho, there's somebody I want you to meet. Really? Actually, he's seen you in church and mentioned he'd like to get to know you better. Who? Jimmy, one of the young preachers in our church. Jimmy, dark-haired, light eyes, handsome? That's him. Wow, I had no idea. What do you say? I don't know. Oh, come on. You'll have fun. He's very interesting. What if he doesn't find me interesting? Well, he already does. And you're intriguing, dear. Fascinating through and through. I did go out with the unassuming and extraordinary young preacher and continued to for three years before we married. Together, we've served on various ministries through our church and graduated the Bible Institute together. I even wrote about my journey to freedom in the book, Free Indeed. Now, my husband and I have a two-year-old and another on the way, and every day I give thanks because my babies are growing up in a loving Christian home with a church family and Jesus. 10 years later, I look back, amazed at it all. God took my bad decisions and worked them out for good, just as he promised in Romans. God did for me what the psychiatrist couldn't. He healed my mind. Through the consecutive years of walking with him, I've found his truth has enabled me to combat the destructive thought patterns that held me captive for so long. When you feel like you're about to sink beneath waves of disappointment and hurt, when life overwhelms you faster than you can think, and there's nowhere to turn, I can tell you with absolute certainty 
that Jesus is here and loves you and can see you through. If this applies to you, who is the person in your life that's causing you to stumble? Whose destructive lifestyle endangers you? They could be best friends, significant others, even parents. The verse that comforted Katie was Matthew 19, 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. It can be hard to turn from those who are close to you, but when they slowly try to dig up our old selves out of the grave, we can't be afraid to forsake them. We simply can't keep compromising for relationships that can hurt us and cause us not to pursue Christ. Katie recognized Chris's destructive lifestyle and, well, she made the hard choice of saying goodbye to someone she cared about because she knew he could only hurt her. God opened new doors for her that way. Pray today about who in your life is holding you back from becoming more like Jesus and everything he has for you. Now, if you've been listening to our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, you know we love giving you a sneak peek into what we do here and who we are. So, today's sneak peek is a quick fact about a man named Jack O'Dell. Now, Jack O'Dell uh, was an agnostic alcoholic who had ruined his radio career. In 1952, the producer of Unshackled, who at that time was Eugenia Price, who had been agnostic herself uh, sometime before, told Jack her story of how she'd been saved by Jesus Christ. So on his way home, he pulled his car over, and he did the same. He gave his life to Christ. He became a believer and a follower. And Jack O'Dell went on to act, write for, and produce Unshackled for 35 years. <laughs> Oh, what an amazing testament to the power of story and the transforming power of Jesus. So if you've got questions about who we are, how we run, or how you can listen, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to answer it as soon as possible right here on one of our audio drama episodes. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264, and we'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts on the same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. Uh, we appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Okay. Here's the prize for our upcoming sweepstakes contest, a beautiful wooden scripture plaque. And I believe the scripture on this uh, particular plaque is Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. Folks, this is a gorgeous plaque, especially if you're looking for uh, daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic and um, very unique wooden plaque. The plaque has been sawn from a tree branch or a log uh, and cut in such a way to retain as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. I didn't actually witness that happening, but I can assure you it did. It's been handcrafted around the natural character and the beauty of the wood that God created. So all you have to do to enter our unshackled audio drama podcast sweepstakes drawing, <gasps> that's a mouthful, is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. Your name, phone number, and email. The winner of this sweepstakes uh, drawing for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on July 26th. But the deadline for entry is July 21st. The deadline for entry, July 21st. And next time... Dr. Walker, the phone's for you. 
They said it's urgent. So is this anesthesia I'm administering. It's the police. The police? I'll sit for you. Fine. Dave Walker. Sir, I'm with the South African police. Are you related to Mrs. Erica Walker? Yes, I am. Why? We need you to come to her residence. <sighs> I, I am Dr. Walker. What's going on? Erica! Sir. Check for a pulse! Sir, it's too late. No, no! Dave Walker suffered tragedy after tragedy. Makes me wonder what good I am. If all my knowledge and skill can't save the people I love. Wondering why God was just an onlooker. How's Pete doing? His blood pressure hasn't raised yet. God help him. If God does that sort of thing. He'll miss part one of his inspiring true story on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Katie DePew Part 2 were Jennifer Dimmitt, Cheryl Galemo, Tina Glushenko, Jim Craig, and Michael Walner. Original music and audio engineer Don Bador. Sound effects Michael Walner. Recording engineer David Pierczynski. Script Kylie Hammond. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ. <laughs>